In this video, I'm going to make the case that UFO skeptics are stupid. And if you disagree with me, feel free to make a video titled Why UFO Believers Are Stupid, The Marketplace of Ideas. It's a beautiful thing. There have been a lot of skeptics who have analyzed the gun camera footage released by the Pentagon and have claimed that it's full of holes like Swiss cheese. So my first question to the skeptics would be that if the gun camera footage released by the Pentagon is so problematic and so easy to debunk and so obviously not authentic in showcasing an object that can't be explained by conventional means, then why would the Pentagon release it with the indication that it can't be explained? Please give me an answer. The objects that were studied from the gun camera footage released by the Pentagon were studied by personnel that are absolute experts on military hardware. So here's my question. How, are the, how is some random skeptic out there going to discern something that was so easily overlooked by those employed in the Pentagon with endless funds, endless resources, endless technology, at least in comparison to other militaries, and yet some skeptic on his laptop with some little experiments somehow can f figure out uh, a good explanation for these objects, but the 12 members working under Lou Elizondo somehow overlooked it. I mean, does that sound plausible to you? Because I gotta be honest, that doesn't sound plausible to me at all. Now a clever skeptic would rebut with, yeah, in theory, it doesn't sound plausible or likely maybe, but there was actually an incident that occurred that is precisely what you outlined, except it didn't happen with the American government, it happened with the Chilean government, referencing the, an event with a UFO that happened a couple years ago that apparently was later debunked by skeptics or at least brought into serious question by skeptics. And therefore the, the skeptic would tell me that since the experts in Chile got it wrong, therefore there's a very good possibility that the experts at the Pentagon have also goofed with the two videos of gun camera footage that were released. On the face, that seems like a legitimate rebuttal. But I actually think it falls short, and I'll tell you why. For one thing, if you examine the incident that happened in Chile versus what's taking place right now under the Pentagon, right off the bat, you could cite that it's two versus one. In other words, the gun camera footage given to us from the Pentagon encompasses two separate events versus the event that happened in Chile, which is one event. So with a very simple statistical analysis, it's far less likely that the experts at the Pentagon goofed regarding two events than it is that, the, that experts goofed regarding one event. But the false equivalency runs far deeper than that. We are talking about a program in the Pentagon that lasted for literally 10 years. And while I don't know the exact number of incidences that the team under Lou Elizondo came across that could not be explained by conventional means, I'm certain that it was a significant number. If I had to guess, I'm sure that it was at least 30 and probably more. So you can only take the Chilean goof so far. You cannot logically say that because the Chilean government goofed, therefore all the incidences under Lou Elizondo we're also goofs. That's not logical. Before I proceed, I want to circumvent a potential counter argument. Earlier in this presentation, I said that the program within the Pentagon studying UFOs was receiving endless funds. Of course, I didn't mean that literally. I'm well aware that they were receiving about four and a half million dollars a year. What I did mean is that the military and intelligence apparatus of the United States is more well-funded than any other country in the world by a very long margin, and that has been the case for decades. So all of the research and development that precedes the UFO program and the Pentagon does not exist in a vacuum. The people within the Pentagon that were studying UFOs directly benefit from all the prior research and development, and they have the best methodologies to assess data, they have the best equipment, they have the most knowledge, etc. I would go so far as to say that there's no question in my mind that there's not another government on the face of this planet that can assess the data as well as the US government. And that is what I meant by endlessly funded. Another thing I want to cover is something that I feel skeptics somehow 
totally missed the point on. And I kind of feel like, at least from my experience, it's because they are ignoring context. In other words, a skeptic will look at the gun camera footage released by the Pentagon, try to find an error in it, and then conclude that somehow they've discovered something that 10 to 12 experts within the Pentagon overlooked. For one thing, whatever they discovered is probably faulty in reference to logic, but in another, they're ignoring the fact that the data they have is probably not even 10% of the data that has been examined within the Pentagon. Because the Pentagon is going to cross-reference the data very methodically, very rigorously. And Lou Elizondo touches upon this. So instead of me trying to explain to you how the gun camera footage is only a small piece of the puzzle, I will allow you to listen to what Lou Elizondo has to say. It's not just the eyewitness testimony. It is, it is actual electro-optical data and radar returns. It's also people like uh, radar operators and air traffic controllers. So I think the discussion is, should be maybe a little bit broader than that. I think people are focusing just on two videos uh, coming from a set of F-18s when, when really it's, it's, it's a lot, lot more than that. In the following clip, Lou Elizondo breaks down even further what is meant by cross-referencing. The following clip comes from the morning edition on NPR. Roll it. There's a lot of things at play into what we're looking at. And then at that point, we try to look at what we're seeing on the video and cross-reference that to anything that we may know that is currently in our inventory. So whether they be drones, commercial aircraft, military aircraft, missiles, what, whatever they may be, um, there is a, a great deal of effort by the department to make sure that we always can identify what is flying, whether it's in our airspace or any other airspace. So that's very important. I'm thinking about with uh, football, if there's a controversial play, you can get the instant replay and look at it from different angles. I guess if you have a video like that from a pilot, you can ask, what did radar see? What did a satellite see? What did other forms Absolutely of sensors see? Absolutely right. So it's, it's really cross-referenced. There's a lot of uh, rigor and diligence that's placed in looking at these. And uh, there are some, there, I tell you, there's some real talent in the department and in other agencies within the U.S. government that have just just an absolute incredible um, battery of tools to, to apply towards these things to make sure that we know what we're looking at. And, and truth be told, sometimes we do. We look and say, oh, that's, uh, that's uh, X, Y, Z, and the reason why it looks this way is because of ABC. But unfortunately, there are other incidents that can't be explained. Before I get into the last segment of this video, which is very special to me, and it's something that totally blew my mind. I want to cover a tweet that Mick West tweeted and that Joe Rogan retweeted. And what is noteworthy about this tweet is the tweet is 100% fraudulent. And Mick West fell for it. And Joe Rogan fell for it. This quote that is tweeted by both Mick West and Joe Rogan comes from an anonymous staffer. But far worse than that is that this quote has been completely discredited and Mick West and Joe Rogan would know that if they would even do just a modicum of cross-referencing, of looking beyond a single article. The tweet reads, Perspective on the U.S. UFO Program, quote, After a while, the consensus was we really couldn't find anything of substance. They produced reams of paperwork. After all of that, there was really nothing there that we could find. We only did it a couple years, end quote. Upon seeing this tweet, I was immediately skeptical of the embedded quote because I've examined the gun camera footage of both UFO events released by the Pentagon and I found them to be highly significant. So this quote taken by an anonymous staffer was problematic from the start. The next thing I did was take a look at Harry Reid's Twitter account to see if the anonymous staffer was accurate regarding the following statement. The former staffer said that eventually, however, even Reid agreed it was not worth continuing. This is in reference to the UFO program. And here's Senator Harry Reid's tweet from December 16th that both Mick West and Joe Rogan should have checked prior to believing what a anonymous staffer has to say. The tweet says, the truth is out there, seriously. Now does that sound like someone who believes that such a program to search for UFOs was a waste of time? I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. Now the next clip further exemplifies that whoever that staffer is, is without a drop 
of credibility. In some news stories about the UFO study, anonymous staffers say Reed stopped supporting the study because it produced no solid information. Well, of course, Reed didn't kill the program. I wish it, I wish it were still going. The following clip has changed my life. I consider it second in importance, only second to Lou Elizondo's statement that UFOs are indeed real. It is a pilot talking about the Nimitz incident, and even though I've already seen the gun camera footage of it, when you hear the pilot talk about it in concert with the gun camera footage, it just blows your mind. And I'm gonna put this out there, I know I'm, go I'm going out on a limb, but I do not believe the truth embargo can survive that video. That video is so compelling. Good luck to all the debunkers out there because I don't think you can debunk that video unless you're mentally insane. I'm not gonna say much more about this clip. I will link to the full clip in the description. I want everyone to watch it, but what I'm gonna show is just a portion of it. What's funny about this clip is it really puts into perspective how idiotic Mick West's tweet was that said that there's no substance to any of the findings they had under the UFO program, and it puts into perspective Joe Rogan retweeting it. Mick West, Joe Rogan, you gotta do your homework. If you're going to make assertions, do your homework first. 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 Roll it. You're an experienced pilot, you've been up in the air a lot. I imagine you've seen, seen a lot of things in the sky, what was it about the movement of this or the appearance of this that, that made you believe it wasn't from this world as, as opposed to something else? Well, the first thing is it had no wings, so you think, okay, it's a helicopter. Well, there's no rotor wash in the water, there's no rotors, and when helicopters move side to side, they kind of slow and then they pick up speed going the other way. This was extremely abrupt, like a ping pong ball bouncing off a wall. It would hit and go the other way and change directions at will. And then the, the, the ability to hover over the water and then start a vertical climb from basically zero up towards about 12,000 feet and then accelerate in less than two seconds and disappear is mm -hmm. something I had never seen in my life. In conclusion, I want to make it clear that I do not think Mick West nor Joe Rogan are stupid. In fact, I think they're both intelligent. Uh, you shouldn't read into my title too much. The point of a title is to get people to click on your video, not necessarily to express your true feelings. Moreover, I have tweeted back and forth with Mick West quite a bit, and I think the guy is a stand-up guy. But however, I do think he is mistaken about the UFO subject, and I also think Joe Rogan is mistaken about it, and I think there's a little bit of dogmatism going on there that should be rectified in my humble opinion. Last thing I want to say, 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 nail, 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 nail DeGrasse nail, Tyson. Grass, Tyson. I look forward to seeing you soon, you sir. Soon, sir. Soon. I'm sure our meeting will be quite, 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 quite amicable. amicable. amicable.